Okay, so let's talk about the induction cooktop. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering just about that yeah, topic only. That was a huge experiment and... This question is from Levon and Alan Shelton. How is the induction stove slash convection combo working? Has it limited your cooking options? And can you ever exceed the capacity of the batteries? So do you ever have to, when we're cooking, are we exceeding the power that we have available? So I really like it. It took a little bit to get used to, um, but what do you what do you think, Kaza? Um, yeah, I think the same. Like it took a little us a little bit to get used to it because it is quite different from cooking on a, you know, a flame instead of like power like that. And I think it's just more about timing and learning the pots, like getting the right kind of pots because we needed to change all of those. Uh, you also can't run both burners at high at the same time. I think that has to do with the actual yeah. uh, kind of top itself. <laughs> like maybe you will get be able to buy one that you can do that on, like have both on the full full power. So it's more like I would say that you need to think more about how to time the meals than what we needed before. But other than that, I love it. Like now after, I would say it took us a few weeks and then we got into it and like got the right pots and pans and kind of, yeah, really liking it. And I mean, I think the biggest upgrade has been the oven. Yeah. The oven is absolutely incredible compared to the old gas oven. I don't know why gas ovens we've had so bad luck with them like the flame always go out it always burns in the back and it's raw in the front <laughs> yeah. and with this one it's just i mean it was 200 dollars in grenada right yeah true value hardware it's crazy and we just like made a gimbal for it so it kind of gimbals with the stove and we cooked the turkey in it we cooked we cook everything in there and it's awesome yeah and one of the big benefits for me is I don't have to run around trying to find propane and refill yeah. propane tanks which can sometimes be an adventure but most of the time you can find adventures doing a lot of things <laughs> uh, and the other thing is heat it uh, we went over yeah. to a neighbor's boat and they were cooking out of their on their gas stove and it felt like somebody would turn on the heater and I was I was teasing them a little bit about that why they had a heater on <laughs> in the Caribbean yeah, and um, the timer is pretty cool. Yeah, so I think that stove... Do you want to go walk over and yeah, show it? Yeah, let's check it out. So this stove, uh, in combination with a pressure cooker, is, I think, the coolest thing because it makes it that much more efficient. So this is a pressure cooker. So basically, to use the stove, what we do is we turn the switch on. The inverter is already on. Um, I would turn the burner on. And then I would say, okay, get it up to pressure. You know, once it's up to pressure, I would bring it down to like a number three because I know from experience or four that that's gonna maintain pressure for me. And then I would set the timer to like, you know, 13, 14 minutes. And then boom, you got soup on. Can you exceed the capacity of the batteries while we're cooking? Like how much can it take? Uh, you cannot exceed with the system we have we can't exceed the capacity of the batteries uh i mean we could use it for a long time and then bring the voltage down in case we would need to turn on, on the generator to to charge or just power the stove directly um, but the the limit on the system is the inverter so we have a 3000 watt inverter the induction stove uses 1800 watts between the two burners so you can go 900 and 900 or you can go like 1200 and 600 but you know that's why what when karen was talking about you can't have both burners at full power you're splitting 1800 watts between two burners and high power is 1200 so there is yeah. a little bit of but that has nothing to do with the inverter nope, that's nope. the unit uh but that thing maximum rated power is 1800 watts the oven is about 1300 watts so together those two come up to 3,100 watts. So if we're running the stove full blast and we're running the oven full blast, uh, we were exceeding the capacity of the inverter. Yeah. So if we need to do a meal where we're gonna be cooking on both burners 
uh, and cooking with the stove and maybe having some other things on the boat run, we would just turn the generator on for that period. Because, yeah. I mean, the only time I can remember that happening was when I cooked that turkey at the very end. I needed to use that. Yeah, just occasionally if people want to do other things, if we're charging. And yeah, but it's not a big deal and it's a good excuse to make water and yeah. make hot water and stuff. Um, so, so yeah, so far it's been working really well. So this is a, a cool question because we've been thinking about this lately as we're about to do a long passage, an ocean passage, and it's the first one we're going to be doing without propane on board. So this question is basically with so much going on electric, with electric on the boat, if you find a, ba vi a bad battery switch, what is your fallback plan if you lose a single threaded element like a switch during a crossing? Well, I uh, guess uh, this system basically has two built-in ways of getting power to mm -hmm. our cooking if that's what we're talking specifically about so we can use the inverter right which is charged by all these different sources or we can power it straight from the generator yeah. so i really think the single point of failure would be the stove itself so if something happens with the stove uh, it no longer runs yeah um then we need to find another way to cook which we've decided to have a um just a small propane camping stove so we like can one you can carry in a little case just boil some pasta or heat up some eggs or whatever you need to do uh, I do think it's worth saying that we actually had two failures of the pro propane system on Delos mm -hmm. um, one time the solenoid went bad and if your gas solenoid goes bad you have no way to get gas out of your tank you have to directly plumb it uh, into the the internal uh, hose which is incredibly dangerous you have yeah. to turn the tank on every off every time the other thing is uh, from the constant rocking, eventually the propane hose between the stove busted mm -hmm. uh, in the South Pacific. And then I needed to fashion a new hose out of the dive tank fill line, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we couldn't have cooked. So no system's perfect, but um, I guess you could also carry one of those small portable induction things you can buy at Ikea for like 70 bucks. Yep. It's a small plug-in one. Yep. Or a, yeah. Let's say you get struck by lightning and you lose everything. Sail. <laughs> Sail and fish. Eat raw noodles. If you like the video and you like the topics, please uh, be sure to like it on YouTube. Leave a comment. That really helps us to know whether we're on the right track with making the videos that you want to see. And most importantly, we're still releasing videos on a weekly basis. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do and make sure that you get all the videos uh, from us as a notification. And it really, really, really helps us in our YouTube demographics and stats and things. So thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good one.